All right, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to a new week. Yes, well. Good morning, sir. Good morning, it says. Good morning. All right, let's begin this time with a word of prayer so maybe one of us can please lead in prayer. Any one of us. Yes, go ahead, please. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, patient of this, we thank you this morning for giving us the opportunity to learn again. Thank you, Lord, because you are the God who will start with the week with us. Thank you for our lecturer. Thank you for all the students. Thank you for the Warden Council of the school in the name of Jesus. That if we start this week, O Lord, in you, we start with you, O Lord. May we hand with you in the name of Jesus. And Lord, give all retentive memory. And Lord, above all, let know you more and more in the name of Jesus. We soak ourselves this week, blood of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, success. All right. So we'll get into chapter five. Uh, we're going to be talking about competitive advantage and strategy. Like I mentioned briefly last class, uh, in ministry, there is no competition, right? Uh, we're not going to say, okay, are we competing with other ministries or other churches? That is not there. We know that, uh, you know, we are one, uh, whether we are small, big, whether we are in the city, whether in uh, in, in villages or towns, it doesn't matter. We are building God's kingdom. So there's no uh, competition in ministry, but there are some principles that we can use from this lesson to help us, whether, you know, maybe some of us uh, are in the workplace, some of them, some of us are only in ministry, uh, but you can, you, we can use these principles in ministry. And of course, if you're in business, you can, there is, competitive advantage it's it's good to have uh, healthy competition so let's look at uh, competitive advantage and strategy in chapter five uh, first one know what you're up against right luke chapter 14 28 to 33 i'll read that if one of you is planning to build a tower you sit down first figure out what it'll cost to see if you have enough money to finish the job if you don't you will not be able to finish the tower after laying the foundation and all who see what will happen will make fun of you. You began to build but cannot finish the job, they will say. If a king goes out with 10,000 men to fight another king who comes out against him with 20,000 men, he will sit down first and decide if he is strong enough to face the other king. If he isn't, he will send messengers to meet the other king to ask for terms of peace while he's still long off. In the same way, Jesus concluded, none of you can be my disciple unless you give up everything you have. Now, we all understand that there is a price, there is a cost uh, in terms of uh, following Jesus Christ. Right? There is a price that we have to pay. Uh, now the price may be small, may be big, but there is a price, right? Uh, but every time we think of a vision, remember it involves a cost, right? Uh, like for example, if I want to start a ministry, I want to start a business, it involves a cost. Now the cost could be in terms of putting in, you know, others may put in, 80% of hard work, you will have to put in 120%. Why? Because it involves a cost. There's a vision. If others are, you know, if you're starting a ministry, for example, others are putting in 90%, you'll have to put in 150%, right? Because you are driving that vision, right? Uh, so it's very important to have a clear understanding what it takes to pursue a vision, right? We looked at Nehemiah, right? What happened? There was an anguish in his heart, and he said, Oh man, the gates have been burned down, the walls are broken down. The vision was there. Okay, I need to build it. But here's what he did he sat down and he probably took a few days to think of the cost. It's going to take a lot for me to do this. I need people, I need material, I need the favor of the, uh, 
uh, so there was there's this whole feeling of okay i need to understand this vision i don't want to start the wall in, in between just you know stop so when you and i when god puts something in our heart right sit and think about it it's good to have a vision right we talked about it right it's good to have a vision it's good to write down your vision it's good to pray about it but what is the cost involved right so for example if it's if it's ministry and you feel okay god is calling you to start plant a ministry if you're praying one hour a day you know it's not enough if you're reading the word of if we are reading the word of god we're spending maybe one one and a half hours a day we know it's not enough there's a cost involved there needs to be that additional effort right so know what you're up against uh, if you if you have a vision, if you have a plan, if it's a small business, big business, whatever it is, know what you're up against, right? Uh, consider, look at this. This is Jesus' words. He's saying, when you plan to build a tower, first you stop, you think about it, whether you'll be able to finish it, and then you begin. Lest you start, and then everyone say, oh, uh, you, you couldn't finish it. They make fun of you. This is Jesus telling you. Right, look at the wisdom there. So, one of the ways that you can, you and I can, uh, you know, know what we're up against is know what's in the market, right? Uh, in terms of uh, competition that is similar to what you're doing, right? I remember many years back when you know when we look at these call centers, right, where you know, uh, the team leaders and managers, what they would do is they would look at uh, other companies and see what they are doing, right? Probably do a research. Uh, and come up with strategies, come up with ideas. Nothing wrong about it, right? It's not like you're stealing ideas. You just want to look at competition, learn from each other, and develop your company and your organization, right? So, for example, you want to start a school, right, in a city. What, what, what must we do? Oh, there's a lot. Now, there are hundreds of schools in a city, right? So, what is it? that I should do if I have to start a school that people and parents will want to put their children in the school. Okay, one, I can, you know, I should have a good place. I should have good teachers. Three, I should have, you know, probably good extracurricular activities. Simple things. So you look at your computer competitors and see how you can either reach them or improve their standards. Right. Second one, compete, but compete clean and fair. Right. Second Timothy two five says, an athlete who runs in a race cannot win the prize unless he obeys the rule. And this is so 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 true, right? If you look at a, a you know a hundred meter running race or a, a two hundred meter four hundred meters, there are tracks. The moment a runner Right, uh, if he starts off before the gunshot, he is disqualified. He may finish the race and you know come first and celebrate, but at the end of the race, at the end, uh, you know, uh, finish line, there'll be somebody there saying you're disqualified because you started early. Right, but did he finish first? Yes. Why is he disqualified? He he did not compete in a fair way. Second, if the gunshot is shot and they're running the race and in between, the runner cannot decide, okay, let me go into the other track. If he does that, again, he's disqualified. And of course, there are certain races where, you know, they can, they all the runners come into the uh, a single track. But, you know, if you look at a 100 meter, 200 meter dash, it, they have to follow the rules. Right? So it's not enough to just cross the finish line. What is important is whether we have followed the rules. Right, Always compete, but compete in a clean way, in a fair way. Build success through the quality of your product and the quality of your service. Right, uh, And you know, in, in, in the marketplace, we have something called as a SWOT analysis. And I don't know, it's been many years that I have come out of the corporate sector. So I don't know the jargons that are being used now. Uh, but I remember there was a SWOT analy analysis. 
right? Strengths, weaknesses, oppositions in strengths, weaknesses, oppositions and threats. Opportunities and threats, I think. Uh, yes. The strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats. SWOT analysis. So we used to do that, right? Okay. How is it that, you know, what are the strengths? What are our weaknesses? What are some of the opportunities and what are the threats that we see? And so we would, you know, just make, uh, uh, jot them down and see how we can, you know, better ourselves. Now, time has shown that a lot of times organizations have really become big, but because of mismanagement of funds, misuse of funds, deceptive ways of, of, of cheating uh, probably customers, financial fraud, not paying taxes, all of this has caused organizations to break down. So when you're building an organization, build it in the right way. Make sure that you compete, you know, when you're competing, you know, go again, you're being vigorous, but you're also being fair, right? Uh, see, don't see competition as a threat, but see competition as a way of uh, learning from each other. Competition never a threat. It's good to, to have healthy competition, right? Uh, and, you know, uh, competition is something that uh, can spur us to do better, right? Now, what about in ministry? These are some things that we can think of, right? Um, when we see other uh, churches or other ministries that are, you know, going through uh, collapsing because of mismanagement, misuse of funds, or, uh, you know, cheating, because you don't want to use the word cheating, but uh, maybe, you know, drawing people towards certain things and uh, maybe financial fraud, which is there. Uh, when we see all of this as a ministry, we must understand, hey, you know, I, sh I must, whatever I'm doing, I must do it clean, I must do it in a fair way, I must pay my taxes or, you know, Ministries don't have to pay because we have the tax exemption. But uh, if there are certain things, if they, you need an accountant, you need to make sure that, okay, all the things that government rules are being followed. Uh, just because we are a church, we can't say, hey, um, you know, God is my leader and I will only follow what God says. You know, we, we need to be submitted to the rules that God has put uh, in the organization as well. Right? Develop a winning strategy. Very important. Uh, when you start an organization, when you start a ministry, develop a winning strategy. Don't develop a strategy that can just help us walk through or just, you know, drag through. No. Uh, develop a winning strategy. You may be, you know, in your company, you may be 10 people, right? Or maybe 20 people or even 100 people. Develop strategies that can help you win in an organization. And even in ministry, you may start off with just three people. Develop winning strategies. Uh, I just want to use this example. I was reading this article on Jack Ma, uh, who's the founder of Alibaba. And it, it, the article really just, you know, it, it, there's nothing, there's nothing about, you know, uh, uh, it's not like he prayed and all of that, but, but the heart of a visionary, Right, it was it was just so much in him. He was meeting in a small two-bedroom house, right? And he had about ten people, and he told those ten people, "If you stick on with this organization, every day he would have team meetings." And he was, you know, sharing this in a, a couple of interviews that I, I was reading uh, in CNN. He was talking about it as well. If you stick with me in this company, you all. All 10 of you will become millionaires. Now he's talking the early 90s, probably, in a small two-bedroom house with a you know small whiteboard there. And they were doing some business, you know, small packages would they would buy and just you know deliver it to people. Nothing. And he told those 10, 10 staff, you work for me. Right? You uh, you know, he was not even paying them. You work for me. You give all you have. You all will turn out to be millionaires, right? Out of the ten, five of them left. They said, well, 
we are not even able to you're not even able to pay our salaries <laughs> and uh, you're saying all of this and so some of them didn't cash over but about five of them stayed back right in that five three of them were you know uh, they continued to you know uh, two of them said no we wanted to start their own thing so three of them were stayed and they really you know worked with uh, jack ma who's the founder and of course many years later uh, you know the business started growing they started doing they hired staff and all of that but in the end those three of them even now multi millionaires now it's not about the money but you see the vision that uh, when, a, when a visionary has uh, he developed a winning strategy were there other companies doing this probably yes that's a winning strategy strategy is a military term which is usually uh, you know used in the art of war right a guerrilla warfare uh, when uh, armies attack each other they have strategies uh, whether it's the navy whether it's the land army whether it is uh, any other they, they they have a strategy they don't just go arbitrarily they have a strategy right uh, uh, to win, you and I need a strategy. To reach our goals, we need a strategy. We need inputs from people. That is why teamwork is important. Right? Talk to experts in your field. Survey the market. Talk to customers. See what works. See what doesn't work. Now, if you want to translate this in ministry, uh, you know you need a strategy to reach out to people. Right? We can't do what we were doing in the early 2000s now it's 2020 right 2022 things have changed 23 uh 2023 that the year we are in it's it's just you know the way we reach out to children the way we reach out to teens is going to be very different right? because they it, it, all, it all everything is changing right children are so aware of what's happening around right so get advice get get strategies talk to people like one of the things I always do is, uh, this is something personally I always do. I, I talk to, you know, these elder couples. I love talking to them. You know, their children are, you know, their early twenties, and I keep talking to them. And say, hey, uh, you know, how did you manage when your kids were in you know, five, fifth standard or in sixth grade? Uh, you know, they're learning. They are exposed to all this. What did you do? Did you force them to come to church? Did you force them to read the Bible? Or uh, how did you manage to get them to, you know, and get involved in church? So what, what am I doing? I'm getting, getting insights. Now, I may not apply the same thing, but I'm, okay, this is something that I can do. You know, everyone gave different thoughts, different ideas. Why? Because they already know they've gone through it. Right? I may be the pastor leading the, I mean, the, the church, uh, but I can't say, okay, I'm a pastor and not learn from each other. Right? I need to develop a winning strategy. And when you look at churches, uh, you know, I, I, I talk to uh, people or I read up a lot uh, and, and look at churches and see how they've been growing, how, how they've been effective, how they've been able to raise up these wonderful leaders, develop winning strategies. Proverbs 2018 says, get good advice and you will succeed. Don't go charging into back without a plan. When you look at the Old Testament, all through when the Israelites went, there was strategy. And some of the strategies were given by God himself. God told Moses, you go, as long as your hand is up, you're going to be winning. It's the army, the Israelite army, win. the moment your hand comes down, you're going to be losing. You, you, you'll see defeat happening. So there was a strategy. He tells Joshua, Joshua, just don't do anything. The walls look big. Go around the walls seven uh, days, seven times, blow the horns. I will bring the walls down. Strategy. Right? And to David, he gave strategies. He said, David, now is not the time. I'll tell you when to go, then you go. Right? So uh, it's, it's good to ask and to learn uh, from each other and learn strategies. Ask God to give you strategies. You know, remember, God is the source of all wisdom. He can give us ideas and strategies that we never even thought about. Right? Goliath is not your real enemy, fear is. 
right? First Samuel 17, 10 and 11 and verse 24. And the Philistines said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. When Saul and all Israel heard these words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Look at that. Saul was anointed of God. Being the king of Israel, he has already defeated mighty armies. He's saying when they heard this Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were dreadfully afraid. Look at that. It started off with Saul. Saul was afraid. The army saw Saul, probably saw Saul, and they were afraid and they were they just ran away. The entire army of Israel, the soldiers were left immobilized when they saw Goliath. What happened? Did they not go against uh, uh, enemies before they've, they've used to it, they've gone. They have fought the Moabites, they've fought the Canaanites, they've fought, they've won victories. But fear gripped them, right? The fear of the unknown, the fear that, oh, what can this guy, this huge man, Goliath, what if he just kills all of us? What if I go and then he destroys me? All, all of this, these fearful thoughts can leave us in a place of inaction, right? So for us in ministry or in business, uh, of course, we don't make foolish decisions, but we must avoid the fear of failure, right? Uh, fear of failure can leave us in a place of inaction. Your real enemy is not your competition. Fear is your real enemy, right? Uh, and sometimes fear can hold us back. It can just stop us. And you know, uh, what is what does it say? We've heard that famous thing: fear negates faith. Right? And some places they say doubt negates faith as well. Fear is it's a natural thing. But Goliath is not a real enemy, fear is. Look at what David did. He was, he didn't look at Goliath at all. He said, I'm not fearful. So the size of the battle did not matter, right? Leverage your experience with lions and bears to face Goliath. We'll skip that verse, but we'll just see what we can learn from this. David knew the odds are against him, right? Uh, a shepherd against a trained soldier, small boy versus a grown big man who is so huge. But no one in their right mind would have thought what David would have done. David tapped into the, his history with God. Right? David tapped into his history with God. So. He looked at his previous battles. David looked at his previous, you know, uh, wins that he had, right? Uh, uh, the battles that he had faced. So I can only picture this. David was looking at Goliath, this huge, probably nine, ten feet, whatever, big man. And then David closes his eyes and he thinks to himself, oh, uh, uh, you know, I've killed a lion. I've seen a lion face to face. I've seen a bear face to face. And I have killed it with my own hands. So what's happening? David is tapping into his previous battles where he won. Hey, I've killed a lion now. So there was maybe some kind of a boldness came in and he said, no, this man is nothing. God has enabled me to kill a lion and a bear. I can, I can take him, right? As far as David was concerned, Goliath was no different. Maybe Goliath just saw him as another lion, maybe strong, maybe powerful, but I defeated him. Even your small successes adds competitive advantage 
right? Uh, don't look at those small success and don't forget about it. Keep it in your mind, right? Those small things uh, that small times when you have succeeded, hold on to that. Use it as a you know when the when the time comes in the future, you know uh, it could be you know if you're looking at ministry, but look at those times when okay you tried something it was successful and you know you saw uh, that people were blessed. Continue to do it. Look back and sometimes we feel oh man God is not using me. Look back and see okay uh, you know these are things that I did and I, I felt the anointing of God. I feel that God is. Uh, uh, you know, was closer to me during those days. Maybe I should get back to that, get back to that time of prayer, to that time of worship, right? So, those small victories are very powerful, right? Sometimes just one pebble is all it takes, right? All of this is from uh, the strategy that David used. Now, David's strategy against Goliath was simple. What was it? He took the stones, he used the sling, and he just he, he took what he was best at. Right? Remember, uh, uh, Saul says, Okay, David, you want to go? I, I don't know why you want to go, but you want to go. Okay, you take my sword, take my armor, wear it on, check it, see if, if this. Goes. So David tried it on and he was uncomfortable. He said, Hey, this is not. Uh, this is only going to slow me down, right? This is only going to, uh, you know, this is not what I'm comfortable with. What are my, what are my strengths? My strength is my sling and a stone. Probably the brothers would have said, "Oh, please don't tell me you're going to fight this man with a sling and a, a couple of pebbles." Right? Maybe the king was like, oh, oh, "Oh, you have to wear the armor and go. You can't go like this." But David knew his strength. He knew all it takes is a cup, one pebble, just one pebble, one stone was all because that was his strength. What if David went with the sword and with the shield and the helmet and all of that? He would have probably lost his agility, his strength, the way to uh, that was not something that he was comfortable with, right? You don't have to be big to be better. Uh, uh, if you can outdo competition in other areas such as skill, agility, innovation, efficiency, and service, you don't have to be bigger. You can be a smaller company, but be better than the bigger ones, right? Uh, and that's something that's very powerful. Now, when you look at a church, uh, of course, we're not looking at being better than someone, but you may be a small church, 100, 150 people. But, but do the, the ministry in that church in a way that you uh, can really, uh, you know, to the best of your ability, to, to your competency, to every use every skill that you have, right? Raising up leaders, raising up teams uh, for the church, right? And you'll know, and you'll see that hey, uh, God is you know beginning to um, empower the church. Teams are very very important, and we talked about that, right? Psalms 27 says, some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Right. Next one, uh, feel free to stop me, ask me questions uh, if you have any. Get the Lord's counsel, your key to competitive advantage and strategy. Very important. Get counsel from the Lord. Right? Consult the Lord. I love this verse, Second Samuel five twenty two to twenty five. Now Samuel is, uh, uh, sorry, uh, David is the king here. And what does it say? Then the Philistines went back to Rephaim Valley and occupied it again. Once more, David consulted with the Lord, who answered, "Don't attack them from here." Look at this strategy. This is God giving David the strategy. Don't attack them from here. But go around and get ready to attack from the other side, near the balsam trees. When you hear the sound of marching in the treetops, then attack. I will be marching ahead of you to defeat the Philistine army. 
David did what the Lord had commanded and was able to drive the Philistines back to Geba all the way to Giza. Okay, look at what's happening here. David, okay, was probably outnumbered here. Now, David had a mighty army, but the Philistines were strong. Right? Now, what does David do? He he could have defeated the Philistines on his own. Hey, I have 40,000 odd soldiers. I can just go in and defeat them. But what does he do? He consults the Lord. And when he consults the Lord, the Lord speaks to him and says, Okay, here's what you do, David. You don't go in straight. You go from the sides. Go from around and attack. Go from the side. Right? And when you hear the sound of marching on the treetops, Right? You will hear the sound of marching, then you attack, because I will go ahead of you. And with this strategy, they were able to defeat the Philistine army. Right? Uh, and it's so wonderful. It's so wonderful how God can give us these simple strategies that can really change the course of events. I, uh, uh, I'm not sure if I've shared this example, but many a times, right? Uh, I've asked God, God, give me an idea on how to do certain things. Uh, 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 it may be evangelistic, or maybe just reaching out to people. Uh, many times, it may be a very simple idea. Like uh, there was this one time. I was praying, uh, I was just praying for the church, Lord, bless the church, you know, uh, raise up leaders, let us all grow in maturity. And all of a sudden, I just got an idea. The idea was tap into uh, the northeastern community of the city. Northeastern. Right? So we're talking about the northeast of India. Tap into that community. I said, how do I tap into that community? So, but then that was a thought. So I again, you know, just kept it in place. But how how do I uh, tap into it? So I realized that hey, there were some of us here uh, uh, in the church who were uh, who are from the northeast background. So I asked them, what is it that they like? Northeast? They said hey, we like they like worship, they like music, uh, and they like fellowship. Right? They may not be too interested in sitting and listening to the word. Uh, you know, for 30, 40 minutes, but they like fellowship, they like music. So he said, okay, what can we do? Let's start uh, worship evenings. Worship evening is targeted to the Northeast community. So he said, okay, let's start worship evening. How many people in the church? 10 people. Right, that's okay. God, thank you for the strategy. Now, what do we do? Do the other things. Which day, is, which day is the best? So Monday to Friday, they all study? Okay, Saturday. Okay, Saturday. So how do we reach out to them? Do we make printouts? Do we make invites? Make invites. Uh, make something nice. Uh, and then go reach out. Right? It was a simple strategy, but it all came as a, just a thought. Right? So be open to what God is doing. Ask God for strategies. God will give you. Right? Uh, right. Uh, Divya shares 2 Samuel 5.20. So David went to Baal, Perizim, and David defeated them there. And he said, the Lord has broken through my enemies before me like a breakthrough of water. Therefore, he called the name of that place Baal, Perizim. Uh, this is in line with what we are talking, uh, uh, Divya, about Okay, so this is the previous verse to that. All right. Yeah, yeah, I was just um, uh, adding it there because yes. uh, this verse had came to me earlier, and uh, there's a movie called Breakthrough. Okay. Uh, yeah, it talks about a mother who he kind of lost her son, uh, but the son, uh, he was all, all like uh, stated dead, like. Uh, mm -hmm. He was dead actually, but uh, this mother came and prayed and 
that boy came back to life. It, it happened. It is a real story. It happened in uh, US Mount. Uh, I think it's in a lake. Um, it's in an icy lake that happened. Mm, I think it's a place called Minneapolis. And there's a movie on that story. So uh, it's the movie name is Breakthrough. And this uh, verse uh, was, this was one of the words that came uh, at the beginning of the year. So yeah, I just wanted to share that verse. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Tavia. That's nice. Thank you for sharing. Right, let's move on. So now each one of us, you know, some of us may be housewives who say, I don't need strategy. No, you need strategies. Strategies to raise up your kids, strategy to be effective at home. Maybe some of us are saying, hey, I'm just a student. You need a strategy. Uh, hey, I haven't uh, planned what I'm going to do ahead. You need a strategy. Every, every sphere, every uh, you know, season of life you're in, you will need a strategy to be effective. Right? And God can give us those small nuggets, uh, which can be so powerful. Right? Uh, and, you know, really, so consult the Lord, look to the Lord. And when you ask God for these strategies, now, you know that God is a God who does unusual things. He makes, he comes up with unusual ideas not something that we may comprehend. So be open to unusual strategies as well. Right? Uh, the example from Joshua, right? And, and the gates of Jerusalem, right? Uh, let, let's just read the last part. On the seventh day, uh, I think that was four, I think. On the seventh day, Joshua 6 was four. On the seventh day, you and your soldiers are to march around the city seven times when the priests blow the trumpets. Then they are to sound one long note. As soon as you hear it, all the people are to give a loud shout and the city walls will collapse. Then the whole army will go straight into the city. What an unusual strategy, right? Again, he has done it in the past. He can do it even now. God can tell us to do things that look very unusual. Do it. If it, but make sure that it's God telling you, right? Uh, pray and know, be for certain that it is God who's telling you. Who would have thought of sending a band of worshippers to stand in front of a wall that was probably 40 feet high and telling those worshippers, blow one note. And, you know, there could have been just one monotonous note but let shouts of praise arise and the walls of Jericho will fall down. Now, Joshua could have said, hold on. The walls of Jericho, Lord, are not built on, you know, uh, uh, not built on some regular sand. They are walls so strong, so wide. Uh, we need tools to break them down. So should I get the army ready? Uh, God, Joshua, God is saying, "Hey, no, 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 no army, nothing. You don't have to fight. I'm going to fight for you this time." Right. So you see that God can use these unusual strategies. Now, whether it's business, whether it's ministry, be open to unusual strategies. Right. Uh, as you work, God moves on your behalf. Uh, when expecting unusual strategies from God, don't forget to do the normal task of thinking through, planning, and executing. Okay? So God gives you an unusual strategy. Think about it. Of course, God is going to do it. But there's also God involved, uh, you know, the, the, the planning. How do I execute this strategy? All of that is important. Right? The, the, the strategy is from God, but how do I, you know, cause these, or how do I make the strategy work? That we'll have to plan it out. 
if god is giving you every point what to do that's wonderful but it's very unlikely that god does that he gives the strategy we have to continue working on it right generally you will have more of the normal than the unusual yes go ahead divya yeah uh, it, this is in context with the unusual strategy so uh, when you said like make sure that it is from god uh, yeah i was uh, thinking about Hello. how how because it's in the first place it's unusual so yeah. how do we ensure like it is from god yeah. right that's a very good question now one one way of understanding and knowing that uh, it is from god is the holy spirit inside us will testify to us right now picture this right in the book of joshua and all of them in the old testament uh, the ministry of the holy spirit was very limited i right? can come minister and go but you and i you have the holy spirit always inside us so the holy spirit can testify to our spirit right the some the simple thing is this how do i know that i believe in jesus i know because the holy spirit testifies of it how do i know that i have to do be in ministry nowhere has it god woke me up like how you know he woke up for samuel and said samuel come i'm calling you for ministry no never happened But how do i know because there's a there's a the holy spirit is testifying at testifying it to our spirit Now, so they were as we keep thinking and praying on a certain point, right? So, for example, I'm praying for uh, God. I'm uh, example, right? I want to start this small business. The business is about a, uh, you know, uh, for example, a stationary business, you know, stationary things. Uh, I'm just giving this example, right? Uh, stationary business. Uh, how do i do it where should i do it uh, i'm thinking about it uh, i need vendors who can provide me for the things right now suddenly god may say more than a stationary what i want you to do is also um, you know start this whole tuition center right uh, i'm just giving an example i start a tuition center I say god I, i'm not used to that when i don't know uh, is it going to be a big thing a tuition center you need uh, you know good teachers you need this you need that uh, now it's something unusual you never thought of it but uh, as you keep praying now it doesn't mean that you know i don't do it right? so you know okay we start the uh, the stationery shop or the stationery business that you god has already told you begin to do what is the normal Right, but you keep praying about something that is not been in your heart but god is speaking to you about it so as you keep praying the holy spirit will testify in your heart say okay now is i think this is what i have to do because it it's pushing me holy spirit is pushing me god is pushing me towards it so the way to answer your question i think we need to spend we don't have to be in a hurry uh but a way to really understand that this is god is take your time but uh, uh but pray about it right pray targeted prayers god is this something you want me to do how do you want me to do it give me the strategy give me the uh, give me the wisdom to understand what i must do do your research right uh, so tuition center okay what do i need i need good teachers firstly i need a place uh Uh, you know i need to uh, look at what the others are doing in terms of uh, you know starting a, a tuition center right so i do my groundwork but i'm still keeping it in prayer i'm just looking at okay god this is what i should do if you feel this is what i should do lord you open the right door for me uh, give me the wisdom uh, on how i should go about things and then there'll come a time when you'll be certain that this is what god wants you to do Right. And and I'm just given this example, but it can be anything. Right? It can be in ministry. It can be starting a small group or whatever it is. Right. Uh, so give give time. 
Right? We don't have to jump into it immediately. Uh, pray about it. Think about it. And while you're doing that, don't be stagnant. Right? So don't say, okay, I'm waiting for God to answer me in this. So till then, I'll wait. No. We keep doing the other practical things. And at the right time, God will just testify to you. Right? The Holy Spirit will testify and say, now you do this. And uh, so not yeah sure so not always it you know it's like you we can hear the voice of God and, uh, very unlikely God just testifies it to us but of course the word is there that is a very powerful way you just keep reading the word the word will you know just minister and uh, it can tell us what to do right because we always say this right the word of God is God speaking to us uh, so be open to that as well. Last point, and then, yeah, sure, yeah. Last two points here. Uh, down, but are not out. Uh, now, come back with a new strategy. In Judges 20, the, Is the Israelite soldiers were going against one of the tribes. The tribe of Benjamin faced defeat on two consecutive days. They were discouraged, but the Lord directed them to go back into battle for the third time. And when they went into the battle for the third time, they used a different strategy and they were able to defeat the enemy and they won. The battle was over. But here's the thing. Sometimes we fail. I mean, we all know that very familiar saying, failure is a stepping stone to success. But sometimes, yes, failure is a stepping stone to success, but the, the consequences of the failure can be really big. Remember, you're down but not out. Right? Come back with a strategy. Come back with a, uh, you know, with a new strategy. Develop a winning strategy. Get up and try again. This is so encouraging. No, in the book of Isaiah, God tells, you know, uh, we may fall, but He lifts us up. We may be, we may uh, be weary, but He gives us the strength. Right, and so many wonderful promises of God that you know, He's talking to the Israelites and He. Saying, "Hey, why are you downcast? Don't worry, I'm going to lift you up. You may be in captivity now, but listen, the glory of the Lord will arise upon you." He's telling Jeremiah, "Jeremiah, tell the people I have plans for them, plans to prosper them. They may be down right now in captivity, but I have plans, right? So get up and try again, right? You know, many times in ministry and the things that uh, you know." Uh, uh, we are assigned. We may fail. We may not have, you know, we have done our best, but then it's not good enough. We failed. Uh, don't say, oh man, I'm not going to do this again. Uh, you know, last time I failed. No. Come back with a strategy. Right? Try it. If you fail, come back with a new strategy. Try it again. Keep trying, keep trying. Uh, don't give up. Last point. Time and chance happen. Be alert. Act quick and capture the moment. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 11 says, I returned.
so sorry. I think the connection completely dropped. I'm so sorry about that. Uh, right, so we've passed that time, but let's just close with this. Good times and good circumstances, bad times and bad circumstances come to all. What is required is wisdom to handle both these situations, right? both these uh, circumstances. Capture the moment, act quick. So there will be good times, there will be difficult times, there will be challenging seasons, good seasons. Ask God for wisdom to help us maneuver during these seasons. Right, so let's close. Sorry, I took an additional time. Sorry for that. Uh, I think the internet just dropped. So, right, thank you so much. We will meet on Wednesday and continue. God bless you. Have a wonderful day ahead. God bless. Thank you, Pastor. God bless.